Hey guys, a few days ago Sebion released some new snapshots, so I thought today I would take a look at Sebion 1805, their Gnome edition. So Sebion, I've reviewed Sebion two or three times on the channel before. I know I've taken a look at their minimal Fluxbox edition. I've taken a look at their LX Cute edition. I may or may not have taken a look at their Mate edition. I can't remember, but I know I, I've, I've taken a look at the Fluxbox edition before and the LX Cute edition before. Today, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at their Gnome edition. Uh, I, I never do like the big desktop environments when I take a look at a lot of these rolling release distros. I rarely take a look at the Gnome editions or the KDE editions, and I, I need to switch it up a little bit. Uh, although I like minimal desktop environments and minimal window managers, I know um, probably most Linux users are probably using some of the big desktop environments like Gnome, KDE. So I'm going to go ahead and download the Gnome edition. Let's see how big of the an ISO is this. 2.3 gigs inside. So I'm going to download this and I'm going to install this inside VirtualBox. All right, so I created a virtual machine and I booted directly into the live environment here. And wow, I am just blown away by this live environment. Beautiful wallpaper, beautiful theming. I really like the, uh, the little welcome greeter here. And let's see, we have links to our community repositories, package list, the uh, Sebion wiki, uh, forums, IRC chat, their GitHub page, bug reporting, and of course, donations. We also have links to social media such as Google+, Twitter, and Facebook, Sebion's social media pages. Uh, show this dialog on, on startup. Now I'm going to tick that off. I don't need to see this again. What I do need to see is the Sebion installer. Let's see if I can find it. Yep, right here. Luckily, they put it right here, kind of in your favorite programs list when you first open the menu. So it's taking a second for the installer to launch. Okay. And English has already been chosen for our language. That's correct. I'm just going to choose continue. Did I not click that? Okay, there it goes. This installer is kind of slow. I've had this problem with this particular installer, not just in Sabian, but uh, in, in other Linux distributions I've installed previously. Seems like it's, uh, it sometimes wants to hang. You think you clicked a button and it, and it hangs for a second. Anyway, um, keyboard, English US is correct. Times, time and date, America, Chicago as the time zone. That's my time zone. I don't have to change anything. Network and host name, wired connection. I'm on a wired connection, so I don't have to do anything with any of this. The only thing I really need to do is the installation destination. Let's see. I created a 15 gig hard drive in this virtual machine, so it's already ticked on by default. I actually ticked it off when I clicked it, so I ticked it back on. Uh, automatically configure partitioning, you know, let Sabion do automatic partitioning, or I can click this over here and manually set up my partitions. I'm just going to let Sabion do it automatically. Um, encrypt my data, I'm not going to do that, not on a VM anyway. I'm going to click done here at the top of the page. And this is what I mean with this installer. I mean, did I click done or did I not click done? It's kind of hard to tell because it's taking a second. But yeah, it looks like Looks like I clicked done. We still have this little warning thing here in the icon, though. <clears throat> so I'm not sure. It says it's saving storage configuration, though. Yeah, okay. So I guess it, it completed. All right, so root password. I'm going to create a very hard and difficult to guess password says my password is weak, but I'm going to go with it. Click done again, and press done again to use a weak password. That's why it's hanging there. Apparently, you have to click done twice just to confirm you really wanted to use that weak password. Anyway, full name, DT. Password. Let's create a password for the DT user. 
create a very hard and difficult to guess password. Make this user administrator. Sure, why not? Require a password to use this account? Yeah, I want to be asked for a password. I'm going to click done. And weak password again. We have to click done twice. You know, this installer could be better. Uh, I really like the Calamaris installer. Um, the Ubiquity installer in Ubuntu is really nice. This one, it seems like you click on a lot of things and you're not really sure. Did you click on it? Did you not click on it? Anyway, it's installing the software. Installing software 16%, 17%. The install will probably take 5 to 10 minutes. I'm going to pause the recording. I'll come back once the installation is complete. And the installer completed. I've already rebooted the VM. You always have to reboot the machine after you install an operating system. And we wait for our freshly installed Sebion 1805 GNOME to load up. One thing I've always liked about Sebion is it tends to boot up very fast. Sebion, even though it's a Gen 2 based Linux distro, is using systemd for its init system. Where, of course, mainline Gen 2 and a lot of Gen 2 based distros are using OpenRC for, an in, for the init system. Okay, so we logged in, waiting for the GNOME desktop to load here. Sometimes the very first time you uh, log into your desktop environment, it, it takes a little longer to launch that very first time for some reason. Okay, and this is Sebion GNOME. Of course, we have our greeter here again. We're not going to take a look at that. I'm going to tick that off so it doesn't launch on startup anymore. And really nice wallpaper. Really like uh, what they're doing here. Uh, hopefully it was created using uh, open source software. Hopefully it was GIMP. It's probably what they used. Uh, let's see. Applications. Well, uh, instead of your normal GNOME shell, you know, with that big full screen uh, dash or whatever they call it. Uh, this actually has a normal menu system. Love it. Love what Sabion has done here. All right, so under accessories, we have Atom. Atom is not my favorite text editor. It is a uh, an Electron app. It's an IDE. And the reason it's not my favorite text editor is you see how long it's taking to launch? That is normal with Atom. It always takes forever and a day to launch. <laughs> uh, but a lot of people really like Atom. It's a uh, basically a clone of Sublime, I guess. We have Calculator, which of course is the standard GNOME Calculator. Also under Accessories, we have our Desktop Search. We have Files, which is the uh, Nautilus File Manager, your standard file manager in the GNOME desktop environment. Also under Accessories, we have GNOTE. Not that familiar with GNOTE. Of course, it's a note-taking app, but I've never used it personally. Let's see. New note. Okay. Yeah. Looks like your standard note app. Pretty cool. Alright. Also under accessories we have search for files. So we have desktop search and search for files. Okay. Text editor of course is gedit. And this is gedit 3.22.1. gedit is a fine text editor. Uh, where I really don't like Atom, <laughs> uh, gedit's not bad. <clears throat> Under education, we have LibreOffice Math installed. Under games, we have Mind Test. Mind Test is a pretty cool game. I'm not going to play it here on camera, but... Graphics, we have GIMP installed by default. Great move. So, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, GIMP. And uh, GIMP 2.9 Development. Oh, okay. So they're using like the latest. This is not a like a official stable release of GIMP. So they're using a like a release candidate, a unstable development version. Okay. Let's see, if I can get some about information now. You're right here. GIMP 2.9.8. This is an unstable development release commit. Okay. I wonder why they included that. Why would you include an unstable app 
in your release. So, mm, it's a strange choice, but hey, some people do that uh, with their distros. I've seen distros that include like the Firefox nightly builds. I personally wouldn't put something like that in a distro of a, if I was creating it, but some people do. LibreOffice Draw is also under graphics. Shotwell Photo Manager is also listed under the graphics category. Shotwell is a fine photo managing application. Great for those of you that actually uh, use like actual cameras and take a, a, a bunch of pictures. Great for managing your uh, your library of, of pictures. Under internet, we have the Avahi browser. We have Google Chrome as our browser. That's an interesting choice because Google Chrome is not free and open source software. Google Chrome is proprietary garbage. Uh, just joking, guys. But it is proprietary software. <laughs> Every time I make that proprietary garbage joke about something, people, uh, well, you're using the uh, proprietary drivers on your video card. Yes, I am. It's just a joke, guys. All right. Hex chat for our I IRC client. And it automatically connects to uh, the free node network. I wonder if it automatically logs us into the uh, Sabion channel. No, it doesn't, but it does uh, set our username as Sebion User. Let's see, yep, no, it does. It logs us straight into the Sebion support channel. Great. So it even creates a username for you, just a random username, and logs you directly into the Sebion support channel. So very, very cool on that. Transmission is our BitTorrent client. I'm not going to agree to anything here because I'm not going to do any torrenting in this VM today. Uh, under Office, we have Contacts, Dictionary, Evolution for our email client. I'm not a big fan of Evolution. I prefer Thunder, Thunderbird. Uh, LibreOffice, we have the entire LibreOffice suite. Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and Writer. Let's see what version of LibreOffice we're going with. LibreOffice 6. 6.0.1.1. So, the latest LibreOffice. Should be the latest everything. Again, this is a Gen 2 based distro, a rolling release distro, so it should be very fresh packages. Under programming, we have the Atom IDE again and some Python stuff. Uh, under the Sebion category, we have download, download locations, Gen 2 documentation, Git Live help, report bugs, Sebion Git repo, Sebion help forum, Sebion homepage, Sebion packages. Under sound and video, we have the Brazero disk burner. This is the standard disk burning utility in GNOME. We have Cheese. It's a webcam app. MPV for the media player, for our video player. All right, also under sound and video, we have PTV. PTV is a really interesting program to include by default. Um, it is a video editor. It's actually not a bad video editor. Uh, I'm assuming they they're including that because it's a GTK application, but it's not that popular of a video editor. Uh, Caden Live, although it's a KDE app, is much more popular, even something like OpenShot. Uh, you don't see a lot of people use PTV. I used to use PTV to edit some of my videos early on in my channel. Uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control is included. Rhythm Box is the default music player. So your standard audio player in the GNOME desktop environment, Rhythm Box is Quite good, actually. Rhythmbox 3.4.1, music management and playback software for GNOME. Also under sound and videos, we have a program that's just called videos. Uh, GNOME really loves these very descriptive names, videos. And we have a category called Sundry. In that, we have our config editor iBus Preferences and Main Menu. I'm assuming it's editing this menu here. Under System Tools, we have the Gparted Partition Manager. I'm not going to give it a root password and launch that, but you guys know Gparted. It is for uh, editing and managing your partitions. Uh, I'm assuming that's included because if you wanted to maybe uh, use Sebion as a live disk or a live USB stick, it's good to have something like Gparted for, uh, for partitioning. Also under System Tools, we have Magneto Update Notifier, Manage Printing, Power Stats, the Sabion Greeter. This is the little greeter that uh, first launches when you first log in. We have our Settings, which is the Settings Manager here in GNOME. We'll come back to this. 
Also under system tools, we have our terminal, the standard GNOME terminal. And then we have, of course, Xterm. Xterm is your standard Xterm. All right. Utilities. We have our archive manager for zip, unzip, tar, that kind of thing. Backups. We have a backup utility. If it's the standard uh, backup utility in GNOME, it will be Deja Dupe. Really nice program, actually. Pretty easy to use for creating um, snapshots and like doing backup and restores. Also under utilities, we have a character map. We have our disk usage analyzer. Let's check that out. All right, so I created a 15 gig hard drive on this machine. I still have 5.3 gigs available. For those of you wondering. All right, also under utilities, we have uh, the disk, GNOME disk, um, document viewer for viewing PDFs. We have our font viewer. We have help, image viewer, password and keys, our screenshot utility. We have our system monitor. Let's pull up the system monitor. See what kind of resources we're using. I gave this machine two cores of my six core CPU and I gave it four gigs of RAM and CPU and RAM both are kind of off the charts here. I know this is a VM, but it's using 20 to 25 percent of both CPUs. That's not good. Memory, it is using 1.2 gigs of the four gigs of memory I gave it. That's not good because we're not doing anything. I mean, I'm viewing the uh, the system monitor, but I've got nothing else going on in you know the GNOME desktop environment right now. Nothing that should be taking that much CPU or that much RAM. So it's always been my biggest complaint with GNOME. Well, I don't like the workflow in GNOME either, but GNOME is way, way too system resource heavy. It's a hog. All right, and also under utilities, we have the GNOME Tweak Tool. Great that Sebion includes the GNOME Tweak Tool. And we may play around with some of the themes and stuff here in a second. All right, I think, I think the first thing I want to do is see what kind of wallpapers are included by default. That's always one of the first things I change on a system. I assume that's probably what most people want to change is, you know, Unless you're just presented with a just drop dead gorgeous default wallpaper, you probably want to change to something else. And it looks like they're including the standard GNOME wallpaper pack, which is actually really nice. There's some really nice wallpapers in the GNOME wallpaper pack, like this thing here, this beautiful gray wallpaper. Love it. What else do we have? I mean, we've got some great nature photos. We could do something like that. Yeah, that's really nice, too. Do you know what? I think I'm just going to go with... You know what? I really like that. That's sharp. That's classy. I'm going to go with that. Now, let's go ahead and go back to the tweak tool. Let's play around with some of the themes. If I hit the super key, will I get... Yeah, my little dash here. I would really like to enable the dash to dock theme if I was going to run this, but I'm not going to take the time to do this in this VM, but I really don't like having to hit the super key to get that dash to come up. Um, that, that dock, I would want a dock to be present at all times. Anyway, so the arc theme, which is really beautiful. I love the arc theme. I may not would change this if I was installing this on real hardware, but if I wanted to, I do have the Ed Weighted theme, or the Ed Weighted Dark theme, the standard Ed Weighted theme, which is a light theme, the Arc Dark theme, Arc Darker. Now, yeah. they're not really changing much. Anyway, uh, excuse me, guys. Uh, someone's at the door. I ordered a pizza. I'll be right back. So, uh, Shrimp, crawfish tails, imitation crab meat, andouille sausage, jalapeno peppers. Yeah. Now I think I can continue doing the Sabion review. Yeah, I feel a lot better after that. Anyway, back to the Sabion review. Um, playing around with the themes. How about the icon set? It looks like Numix Circle is set by default. Uh, and that's pretty much all we have is the new mix icon sets. And we also have the Adwaita, you know, the default GNOME icon set, Adwaita. Uh, 
if there's only two icon sets installed on a system and one of them's Adwaita, I'm always going to install the other or set the other icon set. That's how bad Adwaita is. This thing is so ugly. I don't know why the GNOME developers don't work on a better icon set. But anyway, I'm going to put the, the new mix icon set back on. All right, I'm going to go back to the uh, settings. Where was the settings manager? All right, under settings, we have, uh, of course, the background, which we've already taken a look at. You can also, by the way, change the background of the lock screen. We have notifications, online accounts. Your online accounts connects you to Google, Nextcloud, Facebook, Flickr, Microsoft, Exchange. Privacy, let's see what the privacy settings are. Screen lock is on. Location services are off. Usage, usage and history is on. Purge trash and temporary files is off. That's cool that you, you have a few options there. Region and language, we have search. Search, is that the file search? Yeah, well, no, this, uh, yeah. This is the settings for what the file search searches through. Your terminal, password and keys, your notes, calculator files, contacts. And uh, under hardware, we have hardware uh, preference settings like uh, Bluetooth, color display, keyboard, mouse, etc., printers. When the system settings, we have date and time, details, sharing, universal access, and users. Click the details. Details. GNOME 3.24.2. Now, that is not the latest GNOME. I believe they're already on 3.26 now. So, uh, I wonder if I did an update, would it, is 3.26 already available? You know what, let's pull up a terminal. Does Control-Alt-T pull up a terminal in Sebion? No, it does not. So, let me see. System Tools, Terminal. And Sebion uses uh, a package manager called Entropy. Entropy has two front ends. It has a... GUI front end called Rigo, R I G O, and it has a command line interface called Equo, E Q U O. You guys know I never really like to fool with GUI package managers, so I'm going to use Equo here in the command line. So sudo Equo update and then sudo Equo upgrade. All right, and then. Of course, we have to give a root password anytime we're making changes to the system, installing, removing software, doing an update, an upgrade. Let's see how many upgrades are available. It's been a few days since this snapshot is released. It's not terribly old, though. This ISO is pretty recent, but being Gen 2 based, even just a few days, there could be quite a number of packages needing to be updated. And one of my complaints pretty much every time I review Sabion in particular, but most Gentoo based distros is uh for Sabion is the speed sometimes of the package manager when you're doing these equo updates or you're doing like a equo install name of program, you know. Everything just takes a little longer than uh say using the apt package manager in Debian or uh, Pac-Man and Arch. All right, there was nothing to update, though. So the system is up to date. So that's great. Uh, you know what? To demonstrate the speed of Equo, sudo Equo install. I'm not going to use Google Chrome. If I was installing this, no way. I'm installing a free and open source browser. I'm going to install Firefox. So sudo Equo install Firefox. Let's see how long Firefox takes to install. <coughs> we need to accept the license. Okay, and it looks like ETA for it to uh, pull down Firefox is around a minute. It's doing this pretty quick, actually. 1.3 megabytes a second for the, the download speed. That's pretty fast. Not bad, actually. I was expecting this to take quite a bit longer. Yeah, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. Okay. So it's pulled down Firefox, now it needs to install it. That was pretty quick though. So the mirrors are pretty fast. I'm just going to let that run. Anyway, uh, what are my thoughts on Sebi? And again, this is the 
maybe third or fourth time I've taken a look at Sebion on the channel. And every time I install it, I, I'm pretty happy with it. Other than that very first time, there was the very first time I took a look at Sebion on the channel, I messed up and I downloaded a very, very old ISO of Sebion's Minimal Edition, and that thing was a beast to get installed properly. Mainly because the ISO was 11 months old. <laughs> but, uh, getting recent snapshots of Sebion, yeah, I, I really liked Sebion. I loved their LXQT edition when I took a look at it. Uh, the GNOME edition, I don't like the GNOME desktop environment, but what they do with GNOME makes sense. Uh, the applications that comes by default, I love the fact that they included that that normal kind of menu system. Love that they, uh, you know, put some extensions in, you know, because vanilla GNOME, I can't stand vanilla GNOME. It's one of my complaints about Fedora is they ship with the plain vanilla GNOME. So I, I got to give Sebion some props there. Uh, Firefox finished installing. Uh, the one thing I will criticize Sebion 1805 on, and I think this is going to change very soon, is that Anaconda installer. It's the name of the installer, that, that particular program. It's the same installer in Fedora, the Anaconda installer. It's what Sebion is using, and I think they used to use Calamares. I could be mistaken on that, but I, I'm pretty sure I've done some Sebion installs before with the Calamares installer. The Calamares installer is a much better installer than the Anaconda installer. If for no other reason, you saw how I'm clicking on things, clicking on OK or Done or Continue in that uh, Anaconda installer, and it kind of hangs, it lags. You get no real feedback from it. You don't know, did you click on it? Did you not click on it? It's kind of a strange installer. The Calamares installer is a much better installer, So, and I think... That is the plan. I think they're planning on going back to the Calamaris installer. So, before I go, I do want to uh, thank one of the Sebion developers who had asked me to take a look at this latest snapshot of Sebion. Uh, his name is Eust Ruiz. I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, but uh, Eust, one of the uh, guys who occasionally views the channel. Uh, he was in one of my recent live streams, in fact, and he mentioned that Sebion had a, a new release. So I'm glad uh, he kept me up to date on that. I'm glad I took a look at Sebion 1805, the GNOME edition. Another thing I need to do before I go is give a special thanks to all my patrons, all my Patreon supporters. Ron, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Mark, Christian, Benjamin, Stephen, AK, Marcus, Kevin, Bob, John, Jake, Interceptor, Matt, Mr. Neely Pops, and The Dark One. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. And for those of you that are enjoying the content provided here on the DistroTube channel, please consider contributing. Thank <laughs> you.